Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. So today uh, I would like to first thank the organizers for organizing this very unique workshop and I hope this continues. And uh, in my short talk, I will be presenting something that I work with Finn uh, in recent months as our first practice of algebraic framework to quantum field theory. It is going to be a little bit holographically related, but we'll see what happens. So the question that motivates us is really the fact that reasonable observers are most of the time far away from any reasonable physical astrophysical objects. So in some sense, we are really, for all practical purposes, at infinity. But GR tells us there are, there are many infinities, so which one are we in? And on the one hand, we can detect electromagnetic and gravitational radiation, so we should be at future null infinity. But then we are time-like observers, so we should not be at null infinity. And also null infinity is some sort of like a, like a conformal boundary, so where should we be, right? And my claim is that physics at Scry plus is really a very useful approximation if you are thinking of yourself as an asymptotic observer far away and whenever massless fields are involved. And this brings us to the question of whether it, there is any, in any way that this can be thought as a holographic things going on. And the quick summary that we are going to send as a punchline is that first, uh, it, the first two points are already known in the literature, which is that there is a sense in which the QFT in the bulk can be related to QFT in the null boundary. It is a result by many algebraic uh, community. And the uh, bulk metric is also encoded in the bulk correlators. We have seen one talk from yesterday and also a, a general summary by Akin Kemp. And what we are going to propose is a simple extension by showing that you, know, you can use these two together and show that you can encode uh, into the boundary correlators all the geometric information in the bulk. And the way to start this is to follow the first day of this workshop is to do it algebraically. So first you introduce a conformally coupled free scalar field on a globally hyperbolic space time in three plus one dimensions. You have the equation of motion and the causal propagator, the Green's function of the theory. And use, using this, you can construct the symplectic space of classical solutions with compact Cauchy data with the usual uh, inner product uh, given by a very familiar object that we have seen. Now, from the algebraic perspective, we can say that the quantization really proceeds by sending the space of smooth, uh, compactly supported smooth test functions into an algebra of observables, which is a unital star algebra. And the elements are what in uh, Bob Wald's uh, book will be called a symplectically smeared field operators which we write uh, suggestively as follows. And it obeys the standard properties of hermeticity and satisfying the wave equation. And more importantly, the canonical commutation relations are written in a smeared version where the right-hand side is a smeared causal propagator in two arguments. We'll skip other stuff like time slice axiom for, for gravity because uh, these are not relevant for our story, but there are all other these extra conditions when you do algebraic quantization. At the same time, it is also easier to work with the VAL algebra, the exponentiated version of the field operator because uh, for technical reasons, boundedness and stuff, where this is a unital C star algebra whose elements are formally the exponentiated field operators. And they obey a slightly different version of a relationship called the VAL relation, which reflects the BCH formula in standard matrix exponentials. And crucially, the properties of causal propagators and the symplectic two form actually conspire to reflect that the last condition, not so obvious, but it actually reflects the canonical commutation relations. And as we do in quantum mechanics to define a theory, we need the observables and the state. So an algebraic state is a C linear map from the algebra of observables to the complex numbers, which spits out expectation values. And we require them to spit out positive numbers for positive uh, operators and also is normalized to unity. And for quantum field theory, we often want to restrict to a quasi-free states. And we'll see later that we also want Hadamard property. And for quasi-free states, they can be completely specified by the two-point functions. Some people allow quasi-free states to be non-zero or one-point function. That's fine. Uh, it's the terminology. 
But the crucial point is that the quasi-free state can be completely specified by its action on the generator of the Val algebra, and it is given in the GNS representation by just the symmetrically smeared Weichmann function. So just knowing the Weichmann function in the canonical quantization alone really is enough to make all the computations work. Now, the picture of asymptotically flat space time that we want to have in mind is the one that Finn showed earlier, which is that you have this few conformal boundary that is null, and you approach them to future null infinity by setting the uh, uh, V coordinates to be infinity. And you want to think of the null infinity as kind of like an actual boundary by embedding your original space time into a bigger space time that is conformally related. This is very useful because now the, the boundary is kind of concrete. It's not somewhere far, far away. And once you go to the larger space time, then null infinity is really just a slice of the space time, which is a boundary. And in this larger space time, the limit of the line element as you go to scry plus is really flat, really and with the normal vector generated by the null generators of the null geodesics. So this is a standard result in asymptotic uh, theory of gravity. And the key point is that in, the, in this coordinate system, which we call the bondi sachs metric, which is the famous uh, asymptotic way of understanding gravitational waves, is that you can write any metric uh, far away as a flat mat asymptotically flat part, which is in blue, plus corrections that depend on asymptotic data. So all the red color involves the mass aspect, the angular momentum aspect, and the shear and the new stancer. So this, this last two captures gravitational waves. And uh, the Bondi uh, mechner sachs group is really asymptotic symmetry that preserves asymptotic flatness. And this is the semi-direct product of the Lorentz group and super translations. So the way now you want to quantize the scalar field in a boundary is really the same as the bulk, except that now you don't really have an equation of motion. You don't have a Klein coordinate equation there. So now you pretend you have one that is compatible with the bulk. So you construct the space of solutions in this manner where the derivatives along the null generators and the, the smooth function itself is square integrable. And you construct the most natural uh, uh, symplectic form on scry plus and you it will turn out that this symplectic two form is invariant under the action of the bms group and once you, you see that once you have these two things or you have the symplectic space of solutions right then the rest just goes verbatim so you can get a val algebra for the boundary theory just by promote using the symplectically smeared field operator but now using the boundary version and you realize that the val relationship can also be implemented and everything parallels the bulk by the following identification I made below. So this is really, really one beautiful way of thinking of quantization using symplectically smeared operators, because if without a symplectic smearing, this is not obvious at all how to proceed with the boundary. And what's even more impressive is that there is a BMS invariant quasi-free state. Remember, BMS group is infinite dimensional acting on the Val algebra the boundary defined exactly the same way as the bulk operator that has a very universal form in the smeared version. You see that it is, has the one over null coordinate squared with a boundary smeared function that is only dependent on three coordinates. And this is universal result that holds for asymptotically flat spacetime whose conformal boundary is defined by scry plus. And uh, we recall that BMS group is also a subset of the diffeomorphism group at the null infinity that preserve this universal structure. And with this, we are now ready to kind of say something holographically. So it is a very, we think it should be a celebrated result by uh, Claudio Dapiagi, who, uh, who was here for the past two days, uh, Walter Moretti and Nicola Pinamonti in 2006, that says that if you can find a projection map between the space of solutions, that means you send your solutions from the bulk to the boundary so that the entire solutions lies in the boundary and the symplectic two form are compatible, then you can show that you can actually embed the Val algebra into the larger algebra at the boundary. Furthermore, this injective star homomorphism that respects all the Val algebra properties can be used to pull back this boundary BMS invariant state to get a bulk state that respects this, ISO, uh, that, that respects this projection. 
And it is really in this sense that we want to think of things holographically. And what this really means is that given the assumptions, if the assumptions uh, are true, then the boundary and the bulk Weichmann functions can be identified with an appropriate boundary smearing function that is related by a projection map. Essentially, you do kind of a large R expansion and sends everything to scry plus with proper rescaling. And it is also remarkable, and we should stress this, that if the boundary state is BMS invariant, but once you pull it back, it will respect all the all the isometries of the bulk, and furthermore, it's going to be Hadamard. And this is really the, the core result that we are going to employ. And back to the Hadamard states, we recall from the past few days that this has to do with the fact that the unsmeared version has a certain form that depends on geometry, the states, but more importantly, the leading behavior reflects the short distance behavior of the Minkowski spacetime. And this depends on the half squared geodesic distance uh, defined by the Singh wall function. And the key observation by uh, Saravani, Aslan Beghi, and Kemp in 2006 is that the metric can be obtained just from this kernel function, uh, kernel distribution by taking two derivatives at two different points, and then you take the coincidence limit. Of course, you take the reciprocal. And this is because the leading behavior is governed by the Singe wall function, and this thing knows the metric. And for this reason, we are going to do it algebraically, and therefore we should be consistent with the fact that we will use our smearing functions. So let us use the smearing function and treat derivatives as essentially uh, shifting the smearing function at two different points and then take the take the coincidence limit according to which part of the metric you want to evaluate. So really, this is just the smeared version, the finite difference version of the expression above. And note that because smearing has finite size, this imposes resolution limits. So how good you are at doing this depends on how small you're allowed to probe the space time. And as you can probably guess, basically, we just have to use the bulk to boundary correspondence to show that you can replace all the reciprocal of the smeared Weichmann function at the center with the smeared boundary uh, Weichmann function at the boundary. And this is really what we propose as a modest holographic bulk reconstruction from the boundary data at Scry plus. It is modest just because it is not really the kind you see in ADFCFT. And note that here, you can see the power of algebraic version is that Unlike the previous slide where you can work with unsmeared bulk Weichmann function, here you cannot do it because the unsmeared version is universal as we expect from Scry plus. So really this reflects the fact that a lot of the bulk geometric information gets carried by the causal propagator and gets stuck in the boundary data. So different choice of boundary smearing function reflects different kinds of uh, bulk geometry that you have. So the question is now I have who have 15 minutes so i guess i should at least press this time and move a little bit backwards so let me just go through one last subtlety before i end this presentation is that really in this presentation the hard part is to justify when the first assumption holds that the entire bulk solution gets projected uh, into the boundary sorry i have this extra gamma on the right and this is true in Minkowski spacetime, but it is known, uh, thanks to uh, a friend here, Gerardo, that pointed this to us, that it is an assumption in generic asymptotically flat spacetimes. And this is basically due to the famous results by Jarok in 1978 that null infinity is not a good enough initial data surface for every single asymptotically flat spacetime you can think of. So the idea is that you really can lose some, lose some information to time like infinity. So you can see that the bottleneck of this construction is ironically not, not, not quantum mechanical. It's really classical. You really need to know where the causal propagator sends things out. And if you have horizons, certainly Scry plus is not good enough as a Cauchy surface. You need to include the horizons. And of course, the same contentious issue of whether you need to include the time lag infinities. And yesterday, there was a question regarding the bulk reconstruction of the metric about how the state dependence appears. And the answer is, of course, uh, the same here, that this construction really relies on the fact that you can resolve enough uh, the, the space-time geometry that the, the leading order term is really the dominating piece. And with that, I'm going to just leave the takeaway here that I stated earlier, that uh, we are making use of two results in the literature that says that there is a bulk to boundary correspondence between the QFT in the bulk and the boundary. And there is a way to reconstruct the bulk local geometry uh, information from the bulk correlators in the stuff. And we use these two correspondence to show that under mild uh, 
reasonable assumptions for many certain cases, uh, there's a certain way we can make holography work in a symbolically flat space time. And I'm 10 seconds before 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Erickson. Uh, questions? Gerardo, you've got a question, I guess. Go ahead. Yes, I got a question. Uh, thanks for this uh, great talk, Erickson. Uh, oh, yeah. Could you comment a little bit about the examples that you've uh, considered? So the example we have is something I skipped because I pressed a button. So for example, we explore this particular, we explore the Minkowski space where interestingly, the bulk and the boundary correlators can be computed in closed form. So you can actually test this out in our, in our paper. We derive everything very clearly. For the FRW one, we didn't manage to compute this very easily because we are not a numerical person. But we do test that if you take an asymptotically flat FRW space-time source by radiation data, so this will be asymptotically flat. And you can test, for example, that you take the co-moving smearing functions, and then you compute the bulk correlation functions. You do the projection. You will see that you know the scale factor. There's a cube power that goes into the boundary smearing function. So you can see already that the geometric data enters there uh, very literally. And then the last line can be converted into the second line just by simple change of variables. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah, so I, I have this run out of time button, so I press here. Yeah.